Nicholas Meeting of the Jefferson City Council to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Lars. Here. Bobby. Oh Miles. Here. Schrader. Here. Peter. Toby. Here. Fire. Here. Thank you. The uh, uh, public participation, anyone wishing to address the council may do so. We ask that you please come to the podium, state your name, address, and a reason for appearing. Seeing no one? They only got one. Oh, okay. Go. All right. You're just being considered. Yeah. Uh, Bill City Engineer, uh, there's one item that didn't make the agenda, so. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give an update on the uh, Main Street uh, bridge construction or the Facebook post that was uh, posted this last week, so I'll just read this. Uh, the City of Jefferson has been notified by uh, DOT that the contract for reconstruction of the South Main Street Bridge has been awarded. Uh, final details have not been provided at this time to the city, but tentatively construction will begin in early September. Uh, that will be prior to the uh, parade so and continue through July of 2023. Uh, this is a full replacement of the bridge structure. Over the planned 10 months of construction schedule, we're going to be driving to close on Main Street, and traffic will be detoured to Highway 26 Bypass, and local traffic will be detoured to Collins Road and Wisconsin Drive. Uh, details and updates will be provided as construction details are made available to by DOT. Uh, the detour roads for local traffic around the city um, will be the responsibility of the city. So I'll actually be presenting a proposal in the next council meeting uh, to approve the, uh, uh, the detour um, and the contract for that. Um, in general, um, as far as the bridge uh, between what it is and what it will be, uh, the railing to railing increases uh, from 40 feet to 48 feet. Uh, travel lanes will increase from 30 feet to 34 feet. Um, the sidewalk increases from 5 feet to 7 feet. Um, so the side walls will be uh, concrete parapets with decorative railing and lighting to match our Seed Street Bridge. Um, final design will not change access points, but we do expect that we will have improved sight lines on West River View Drive due to the widening of the roadway um, across the new structure as well as updated curb ramps and roadway intersections. So, as I have additional updates, I will provide those to the council uh, and provide additional uh, uh, updates, uh, Facebook daily, and things like that. But at this point, I have not had any additional information, and I do not anticipate that these people have any public uh, uh, public meetings on that uh, as well. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Next. Um, to uh, read the following proclamation of the City of Jefferson. Whereas Bill, William Bill Brando was elected to the office of Alder Person in April of 1984 and served the City of Jefferson for 38 years, attending his last council meeting 11 days before he passed. And whereas Bill Brando was elected Mayor of the City of Jefferson in 1986, serving four terms from 1986 to 1994. And whereas Bill Brandle has been an instrumental in the success of the city of Jefferson for many years, not only as a mayor and older person, but as a lifelong resident. And whereas during his time of service to the city, Bill Brandle was proud to be involved and served on the Finance Committee, Streets Committee, Board of Review, Revolving Loan Committee, Plan Commission, Museum Board, Jefferson Utility Commission, and many years as Council President. And whereas Bill Brando was completely dedicated to the city and its residents. He served as a teacher for 35 years at Jefferson High School. Bill volunteered with St. Coletta Boy Scouts, Tomorrow's Hope, the Milakite Days, and at St. John the Baptist Catholic Church. He also served as a member of the Greenwood Cemetery Association Board of Directors for 37 years. And whereas Bill was honored with the George Hickson Fellowship Award from the Jefferson Kiwanis, the Jefferson Citizen of the Year Award in 1994, and the Outstanding Citizen Award by the Jefferson County Reserve Officers Association in 1998, and the WPPI Community Service Award in 2019. Now therefore be it resolved by the Mayor and Common Council of the City of Jefferson, and on behalf of the citizens of the City of Jefferson, it is with gratitude and appreciation we thank William Bill Brandle for his lifelong dedication to the City of Jefferson. That's signed by myself, City Administrator Tim Freitag, 
Council Members Toby Tully Jr., Peg Beyer, Jim Schrader, Chick Niles, Joseph Motke, Lori Teeter, and Richard Lars. Update on the Meadow Spring Conservancy Stormwater Basin. Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so two weeks ago, uh, we heard from several residents uh, with concerns about the retention pond down at the uh, Conservancy Place uh, subdivision of the Conservancy area. So what I wanted to do, because we have several new council members, I wanted to give um, not only a response, but also some background of that area so you guys understand what we've done um, and what we still need to do in that area. So, um, so we have a so I'm just going to start off with some photos up on the screen and these were taken um, October 2020. Uh, this was before we started any construction uh, down in there down in there and this is essentially where the uh, the pond currently sits, and this was a uh, wetland um, at the time. Um, 
this was, and I'm just going to kind of go through some of these photos so you can kind of see what this looked like in the past. Um, so you can kind of see um, some pipes that were located out there. And this was just essentially an um, unmaintained area is essentially what it was. So um, I've been with the city for eight years and I would probably say the majority um, of the last several years um, we've gotten several complaints of this area in particular um, of which seven and a half of those years was owned by Madison Gulf. Um, the complaints, um, Mr. Keene who's here tonight, was the majority of the ones complaining about the condition of how it was back there. Uh, there was an unmaintained wetland by Madison Gulf. Um, there was also water that was also contributed. Uh, it was a low-lying area, but it was also collecting stormwater runoff, sump, sump pump discharges from some of the homes um, along uh, to the north end of the south there. Uh, when, the per when the city purchased the property back in uh, 2021, uh, we redesigned that area for the conservancy. Uh, so we redesigned that wetland as a stormwater management area. And is isn't something that you can just simply construct. So what we had to do in order to do that is to uh, apply for a wetland exemption uh, with WDNR. And essentially what that wetland exemption is saying, this was a wetland that was part of the stormwater conveyance. Uh, and we were able to get that approved through DNR, which allowed us to excavate the entire area and um, construct the pond that we had designed uh, for the uh, for that area. And the pond was going to be uh, was designed not only for the future development, but also designed for stormwater from Fairway Circle area as well. So construction uh, started last year. Uh, after we got the wetland exemption, we contracted through bidding process with Gallup's grading. Uh, we cleared the area, we moved several trees, uh, we constructed and approved, uh, constructed and you know, the approved design uh, to build stormwater retention basin. Um, upon the completion of the grading, the last part, portion of it was uh, the seating portion. So what we did was we contracted with the um, prairie restoration which was doing the conservancy and uh, they seeded all of the pond above the uh, permanent pool which is essentially the water elevation that's permanent out there and they seeded with a wetland mix um, on the banks and then uh, in order to uh, stabilize it the majority of the pond uh, was stabilized with erosion um, there was a portion on the east side um, where the contractor did not have enough erosion blanket um, getting late in the year. We had them just straw those areas uh, to at least cover, the, cover those areas. Um, this is essentially what that looked like. Uh, this was December of uh, 21. So at this time we had erosion blanket, everything was seeded, and then on this east side um, that we just ended up having straw. Um, up there. So typically with anything that is um, seeded in the winter, what you do is come back in the spring, anything that doesn't seed, that doesn't germinate, you come back for, um, for overseeding. So where we're at right now um, is that uh, the areas that you do see out there right That's now um, is winter wheat. The winter wheat, um, what's, what's seeded out there is a combination of winter wheat and then there's also a lot of wildflowers. Wildflowers are still below surface. Those take several seasons to uh, to germinate and start coming up. Um, it is a long process, just like it is in the rest of the conservancy. So, um, what you're seeing there is the winter wheat coming up. Uh, that basically is used to stabilize the ground, and then um, eventually that will die off, and then your know, wildflowers and your more permanent uh, vegetation will establish itself on there. So um, obviously we had a lot of uh, heavy spring and summer rains and it has caused erosion. And I'll, sh I'll show several photos here um, that uh, you can see right here that we do not currently have vegetation on this east side. Uh, we've got some erosion down on the, uh, where the current inlet um, goes into the pond. Um, 
and most notably on the east side, this is areas where um, everything that's up above here, we did have vegetation um, and we had a road romantic. The areas beneath is where we strawed. We've had topsoil um, wash away and then uh, uh, we don't have vegetation in those areas. So uh, a couple other things that I'll note about the pond itself. Uh, the pond was constructed according to design. Um, follows the design of the conservancy including wildflowers and wetland mix as far as seeding. Uh, so the pond slopes above the water will look very similar to the rest of the conservancy. Taller grasses, unmaintained. Uh, that's typical. It's not going to be a manicured um, lawn area or anything like that. So um, the pond was designed and constructed to provide a larger watershed storage area than the previous grading to minimize the potential for flooding on adjacent properties. Um, and it was also designed to incorporate several legal drainage connections that were placed while the property was privately owned, which included the pipe that you had seen previously. Um, it also had, um, there's an artesian spring which was connected uh, to the pond. Uh, there's no easement of record or anything like that. Um, but that was incorporated into the design of it um, so that, you know, we weren't trying to remove anything. We were trying to take care of what was there at the time, regardless if it was um, done above board or not. So, um, so essentially what we've got at this point is we know that we have some issues on the pond. Um, the conditions right now absolutely don't allow for us to be able to get any equipment in there. So I've got uh, currently proposals, one from the company that did the seating last year, and I'm also waiting for a second proposal from another landscaping contractor. Um, I was out there last week and uh, probably stepped down to nearly our knees in certain areas, so it's just it's just too wet to be able to manage, or to uh, be able to get equipment in there. But what I'm looking for is a proposal. We are going to have to do some regrading, certainly in the areas that uh, we don't have vegetation. Um, the areas where we do have some ruts and some washout into the pond, we'll have to remove those areas, and then we're also going to add uh, riprap to the um, inlet areas down to the water's edge to be able to stabilize that. So I'm currently waiting on that. Um, as far as when we're going to actually get to that work, it's going to wait. We're going to be waiting until it dries out. So I'm anticipating that it's probably going to be. Um, could it be as early as late July? Maybe. If we're still getting rains like this. It's not going to be. Well, it'll probably be later in the year, but we are still going to be able to do that. So um, even if it's again waiting for some germination later in the year, we would still be able to get on there as the ground hardens up. And then to be able to stabilize these areas. So uh, I just wanted to first give that update as far as any questions on the history of it, the condition of it, um, what our plan is, and if there's any questions from the council. Um, some have been out there, some haven't, but uh, um, if you guys have questions for me, certainly I can uh, answer those. So the seeding that you're going to you plan on doing, is it going to be different than what you had planned? Is it going to be uh, more, uh, I guess, more aggressive as far as holding? It's going to be the same type of seeding, but it's going to be, we're going to have erosion mat over it uh, to be able to stabilize the soils and the topsoil. And again, these areas uh, we had just strawed in the past. So, so you're going to do a little bit more? Erosion man, yes. Okay. And then also riprap? Riprap at the end, that's correct. It's very important. I appreciate you hearing that. The other concern some of the people had were they noticed some neighbor kids trying to swim in it. Should we put up no swimming signs? I don't know if that's... I, I guess that would be up to the council whether you want us to direct that. Um, as far as, um, you know, we can certainly put uh, put some signs as far as a no trespassing or anything like that. Um, it's just as far as 
you know, we put we put up one fence um, on the uh, north side, basically if bikes come down or anything like that, to be able to address that, so people aren't going to come in or anything like that. I will say that uh, you know, the deepest part of the pond is five feet, and that's right in the center, um, right at the edge of the edge of the water. It's actually a ten to one safety shelf, so it goes out one foot per uh, for ten feet, so it's very shallow, and that's for safety purposes. That's a requirement from DNR, um, and it's incorporated into the plan. Is the water level then about what you expected? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the outlet, uh, basically we have multiple holes on the outlet structure. One is to control the uh, small rain events. Above that is a six inch hole to contain the larger storm events. And then if you'd ever hit the 100 year rainstorm, uh, then um, water would uh, flow um, over the top of the pipe. And that's still three feet below um, any adjacent structure. So the pond, the pond is functioning exactly the way that it's designed. Thanks for the update, Bill. Yeah. Bill, do I get to say anything? Jim, it's really not an open discussion oh, okay. on here. This okay. is for informational purposes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will move on to <coughs> point number eight the consideration and possible action regarding the amendment of the Brickyard Court Homeowners Association Protection Covenants. We'll, we'll address that next. Tim? This is a, a, a bit of a complicated um, matter. Um, first time it's been brought to your attention. Um, Brandon White, who uh, is an attorney, I think, representing either Jim or the Housing Association that I'm going to talk about, uh, is here. I'm sure, Brandon, you can fill in some gaps. Um, Chris Rogers and I have been chatting about this for some time. But um, the background on this matter goes like this. So the picture up on the television is a plat of the Brickyard Court subdivision. Uh, there's a, a number of really quite nice uh, single family home sites. The area in blue is what we're going to talk to about tonight. So when that subdivision was created, that area in blue that basically rings all the beautiful single family home sites was created as an outlaw and that's how it was planted. And I would imagine that was really meant to be a public space so you know you could walk around the whole subdivision um, essentially. Um, so what the request made to the city involves is the housing association is considering, um, I wanted to say vacating, but probably abandoning that blue area is probably the better choice of words. Now, as I understand it, um, by the bylaws of the association and the protective covenants recorded uh, by the developer against the property, um, that would require an affirmative vote of the members of the housing association. But there's one step that really has to happen prior to that, as I understand it. And to be real honest with you, I've never seen protective covenants written like this, but there's a provision in there that requires that notice be given to the city council. The city council could ostensibly object to uh, abandoning that blue area and they're given 60, 60 days to, to do so. We have received notice. We're getting kind of towards the end of the 60 day period. Uh, and that's why I wanted to bring this matter to your um, attention tonight. I believe what the goal is, if I understand this correctly, is that if that blue area is abandoned, it would be made part of the adjacent single family lots, so those lots would be made a little bigger. So the city in the document that I saw, the city, you know, uh, to the extent that 
we have easement rights back there. You know, we don't lose those easement rights if this outlot is abandoned. Those continue on. Um, I also understand that there may be a majority of the housing association members that may be in support of this, but I do not believe it is unanimous, uh, as explained to me. And I know Sherry is a member of that association, and um, um, she has concerns about it. But um, generally speaking, I, I can tell you, as you guys chew on this, um, uh, I would say Chris and I, um, in chatting about this, um, we'd be hesitant to suggest to you that somehow the, the city becomes involved or injects itself into um, this housing association. I don't see really what the impact on the city is one way or another, quite honestly. And so, um, you know, I guess we don't really have a recommendation if, if, if you would want to oppose this other than to say, I guess we're, we would be concerned about interjecting ourselves in the middle of what really might be housing association member politics. And I'll leave it like that. Chris, I want to... Well, yeah, you, I agree with everything you said, and I would note that uh, the city never uh, uh, entered into uh, an agreement uh, to take up uh, uh, that uh, authority given to it uh, in the uh, covenant. We never signed the document, and as far as I know, we've never been involved uh, from the point uh, it was adopted till now. I, I guess, Brandon, I should just ask you, the explanation given, is that pretty reflective of what the situation is? That, that is correct. And uh, as you implied, if the city council wishes to take no action of not wanting to get involved under the terms of the protective covenant that we're trying to amend, after 60 days, if this council takes no action, uh, the association will be allowed to move ahead if a majority then chooses to vacate this. So it, the association would certainly welcome if the city wanted to support this, but it will be able to move ahead if the city even chooses to take no action. To, to my one question, um, are we just referring to the section of the floor? There's an also an outlet here uh, that's not filled in. That's included in it as well, correct? So under the protective covenant, outlot one, if I can answer that, uh, is uh, they're split into two. The resolution that is before the Council for Consideration is purely just outlot two. We do understand that outlot one has more considerations with actual access to driveways and the like of people's property, so that is why it was not included in this uh, resolution. If the association did wish to do any modifications or changes to that in the future, that would require another um, resolution that would be submitted to this council for consideration. Uh, Brandon, if this goes through and uh, uh, the outlot is uh, abandoned or vacated, um, I assume the uh, parcel that uh, joins the uh, individual uh, lot would become uh, part of uh, their title to that property. That is correct. The intention is ultimately, if there is no issues with needing to purely replant this issue, to incorporate this extra land into the parcels, perhaps just quick claim deeds to accomplish that. But yes, it would be essentially if you just extend the lines out for each individual lot and each parcel gets the land that abuts to it, is the intention. And then the, then, uh, the property owners would be responsible for the real estate tax associated with the new property they're getting. That is correct, sir. <clears throat> Jim? So if the city does not want to get involved, do we simply do nothing, or do we, should we affirmatively say we do not want to get You can do either one. You just you don't make have a and say we don't want to get involved, or do nothing. It has the same effect.
I don't think it's any of the city's business, but that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Just the point is where HOA can take care of it. There should at least, well, there would be one other person from the homeowners association. Is that, is that correct? Yes. And, and I'll, uh, I'll entertain the opportunity to provide input if you care to. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm not against the movement of the land away from Mr. King's ownership. He's the owner of record. He pays a two dollars a year, I think, in taxes. It's valued at hundred dollars. The difficulty comes in with the idea that this was land that was made for the association for the common good and the common usage. And if you disconnect that land around the uh, subdivision from that shared driveway, you have questions of, of use of land use later on that the people who have, the speculators who own land that hasn't been developed may need access to that commonly held land and then won't have it because we've taken it apart piece by piece. Furthermore, the association isn't in operative. We've never had a meeting. It's never been properly noticed. It doesn't exist. The attorney is the attorney for Mr. Keene. He's not the attorney for the association. So we're kind of put the cart before the horse. We need to have the association operative. And then we as a group can make those decisions. And I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to it, but I just want it done correctly. So I'd like you to vote no to make it clear that you're not involved. And then if we need to come back as an association in the future, we'll do that. So, uh, I'd like to get a little bit more from that, uh, information from the council members on the field board. Should we take, uh, do you, would you care to take no action? Would you like to take action saying that uh, we don't want to be uh, exercised an opportunity to, to uh, weigh in on this? Or would you like to do something else? I would take no action. That's just right. Anybody can make that motion. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll set it up for right. right. yeah. 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 Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded. Then we take no action. Uh, the effect of that would be to put it entirely in the hands of the Homeowners Association and subject to their request and, and whatever they decide the majority of the homeowners. God, we had a freaking meeting. Okay. All in favor of the uh, motion, please signify by saying aye as your name is called and no proposed. Alderman Niles. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Peter. Aye. Tully. Aye. 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 Byer. Aye. Randall. Aye. Mars. Aye. 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 Okay. So the Homeowners Association is, is free to uh, decide to take the vote forward. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, resolution number 22, tonight's consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, resolution number 22, the consent agenda. We have resolved by the Common Council of the City of Wisconsin, Wisconsin that the consent agenda for July 5th, 2022 is here by pocket, which includes vouchers payable for July 2022 in the amount of $211,686.68. Payroll summary for July 1, 2022 in the amount of $189,277.53. Council minutes from the June 21st, 2022 meeting of the Common Council. And licenses as approved by the Regulatory Committee. There were no operator's licenses nor liquor licenses. There was a temporary Class B license from the Jefferson Light Music Foundation. Concerts in the park and sale of goods in the right of way to the Jefferson Live Music Foundation for concerts in the park. I move approval. It's been moved, sir. Second. Second. Second by all of them. Any discussion? It was unanimous and regulatory. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye as your name is called. Vote for opposed. Alderman Schrader. Aye. Peter. Aye. Tully. Aye. Fire. Aye. Randall. Aye. Lars. Aye. Smacky. Aye. Niles. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Resolution number 23, a resolution establishing Jefferson Wastewater Utility Reimbursement to the City of Jefferson for services rendered to the utility. Alderman Tully, please. Thank you, Honorable Mayor Opperman, City of Russell. 
Jefferson, resolution number 23, whereas the City of Jefferson Finance Committee is recommending that the Jefferson Wastewater Utility reimbursement to the Jefferson General Fund for services provided be established at a level commensurate with the amount of reimbursement provided by the Jefferson Water Utility for years, fiscal year 2023, and years thereafter, until so amended by the Jefferson City Council. And whereas this reimbursement is made by both utilities for services provided by the City of Jefferson, including police, fire, EMS, public works, and administrative services. And whereas the amount of reimbursement made by the water utility in fiscal year 2022 to the general fund of the City of Jefferson is estimated at $300,488, with a final amount subject to completion of the 2021 water utility audit and a final determination by the value of the water utility assets. And whereas the amount of annual reimbursement made by the wastewater utility is currently $200,000, was last adjusted in 2012. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Jefferson, Wisconsin, that the amount of annual reimbursement made by the Jefferson Wastewater Utility to the City of Jefferson for services provided be established at a level commensurate with the amount of annual reimbursement made by the Jefferson Water Utility, currently estimated at $300,488 beginning in fiscal year 2023, and continuing years thereafter until amended by the City Council. I would so move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Do I have a my key? Tim? Sure. Um, so the, uh, the, the City has assessed uh, an administrative charge to the wastewater utility for uh, many years for a number of different services rendered. Uh, examples would be City Hall, for instance, maintains the utility's financial management system. Uh, it does maintain all its accounts receivable and payroll. It does its payroll. Um, it does the benefits administration. Bill does project engineering. Um, I'm involved day to day in uh, uh, the uh, wastewater utility um, and that was sort of goes on and on and on so um, what really happens is we're all paid by the city of Jefferson or you could look at it or the tax levy um, for services that um, we provide to um, the wastewater utility so the city has always assessed the charge to the wastewater utility as reimbursement for um, those um, those costs. And really, you know, to not recover those costs means that um, the city taxpayer is subsidizing the operation of the wastewater utility. Um, and the wastewater utility has the ability to rubber, recover those costs in. Uh, uh, in its rate structure um, and the expenditures of course are always audited annually by uh, the utilities auditor so um, we're not applying a, a payment in lieu of property tax formula like uh, is done in the water utility um, statutorily uh, for the water utility and the electric utility there is a uh, authorization in the statutes and the Public Service Commission that the city can basically ap apply its tax rate times its asset base or the value of a good portion, not some of the properties exempt, but a good portion of its property. Um, and the city's done that for many, many years as well as most cities that have those utilities. And um, the current charge would be for 2023, we think on the water utility side, about $300,000. We're just not sure because we don't have that audit done yet. And in that audit, um, they have the fixed assets of the utility, which would tell us what the value of the property is. So we're kind of making an estimate based on prior years and that number always goes up and down because, um, you know, if uh, a new improvement is made, the number is usually a little higher, but over time, those assets are depreciated. That You know, they'll kind of rise and fall depending upon um, what's happening in terms of uh, capital projects. 
Um, on the wastewater side, there is no such payment in lieu of taxes that's authorized, but rather the city council can determine what that level of reimbursement is. And I, I can tell you, talking to the auditors, there's no magic formula. Um, cities with wastewater utilities, and of course there are a lot of them, they set that number at, it's, it's a wide range um, for that. And so the one thing we kind of struggled with is when water came over and was um, joined with the wastewater utilities really starting the first of this year, um, a few months later in the spring we started to do this time study to try to figure out how much time city personnel are spending on those matters. And, you know, I like to tell you we have our hands around that. I think it'll be a full year because depending on the time of year, the amount of effort that city staff makes for the utilities varies from one month greatly. So I think we need like a full year of experience. So what the discussion at the finance committee was because the current charge is $200,000 a year. That hasn't been adjusted in a long time. The last time it was increased to $200,000 was uh, 2012. You know, this January, that will be about 13 years ago. And, you know, this is typically a year now with high inflation that, you know, the city ideally would recover uh, costs. So, you know, we just simply said, all right, let's set the level for 23 until the time study is done at a rate that is commensurate to what the water utility um, currently reimburses um, the city. And I would assume that might adjust um, at some point in the future once we have our time study done. I will give you a, just a, a, a quick idea. The wastewater utility typically has more asset base than the water utility. The value of the wastewater utilities plant is much greater. If you applied the payment and move of tax formula, it would end up probably paying $450,000 if that's what you wanted to base it. And, you know, we didn't want to do that. You know, we wanted to manage the impact on rates. So that's why I think the discussion at the finance committee level was to set that at an amount measure it with what um, the water utility pays under the payment of the uh, tax formula. We discussed this multiple times at finance and was unanimous. So is, are you saying that for all these years you've been, since for all these years when Bruce was running Water and light, he didn't do any? Yeah, yep. Water, the power utility and the water utility uh, under the state statutes have been making um, a payment in lieu of property tax payment to the city for a uh, long, 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 long time. So yes, they, they, they have. And when you think about it is with the... No, okay. Instead of property tax. Okay, that is it. But I'm saying that in all these years you've done, that the city has done the payroll and and all of that for the for the utilities. Which one? We have a lot of them. For, for water and life. Uh, no, they they, no, do they, that, they do their own payroll and. But you just said that this is in for the wastewater utility. The city's done the wastewater utility payroll. It, it benefits administration, accounts payable, receive receivable, um, overseeing the financial management system. That it's done for many, many, many. Years. But many, many, many years now. Yeah. What's the number? Years? I don't know. I've been here. Going on 16 years, it's done it. Tanya has been here 20 some years. The city's always did it. I don't really know what happened beyond. Well, then we should have okay. a better handle on the number of the, the amount that we should be paying. Well, as as I would say that 
there is no on the on the wastewater side the rules are different than on the water and on the electric side there is no formula it's subject to an amount set by the city council and years ago i can tell you i don't really know how the council may have arrived at that number uh, i know we looked at it in 2012 was the last time i looked at it when it was adjusted to two and i just know that is far short of the cost heck if if the wastewater utility had to do what we do for them, they probably had probably three people. I don't. The I guess, Tim, I don't remember this in the budget ever. Every year, every year, there's line items and there's a breakdown of what it what it's used to reimburse the city for. I don't remember it just coming separately, like it is right now. Um, only because it hasn't been adjusted. The last time I think the council would have considered it in a form like this is when it was last adjusted in 2012. You know, it hasn't been considered because the number hasn't changed. It's been the same for the last 13 years. Pardon? I was here in Yeah, so was I. I remember discussing it with you at that time. So, I mean, that's why there's not an annual discussion of it. It's just the number hasn't changed for so long. So just to summarize what we're talking about here, the water utility has been paying this over the years. The wastewater utility has not. And that what we're considering now is that the wastewater utility would make a, a uh, payment similar to the water utilities, correct? But not a payment in the tax. But, but not, not a payment, payment in the tax. tax. Right. Reimbursement for services right. rendered right. for managing their right. financial. And, and so and we're, it, it would we're, it will really make more sense mm -hmm. is when we get to discussion of budget adoption uh, in the late fall, you know, there will be a breakdown of where these costs are going to reimburse the city for services provided. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't have that. Tim, so is this legal? Yeah, it is, as long as it, it isn't uh, characterized or found to be a payment in lieu of tax, it's perfectly legal. How is it different from payment in lieu of taxes? Because it's a reimbursement for, for services we're actually providing as opposed to a formulistic uh, amount. Uh, that's determined based on what their assets are. So then we would need to, at some point, set forth what exactly is being re that, That's probably a good idea. We're not at that point right now. We're not at that point right now because we haven't had a full year in, in right. showing what uh, we're actually doing. It's an estimate, more or less. And the audit will shake that out, uh, but it's going to take a year to cycle through. And then it could. Presumably be up or down. Yeah, absolutely. We're confident that what we're asking right now can be supported. I think it'll fall well short of what the actual cost of the or something. Yeah, yeah, I do. But when we have this audit, it'll be listed, it'll be more. Well, descriptive, I, you know, yeah. I guess so. Well, I, I think that I, I just, I, I wouldn't want you to be confused because the, the, the audit will do two things. You know, it will determine what the asset base on a depreciated basis is for all our utilities, but I think in terms of this contribution for uh, by me to the city by the wastewater utility, it's an audit of that reimbursement and what it's used to reimburse the city for. Yeah, so somebody says, What is it used for? I can say this, this, and this. Now, yeah, well, yeah. just you know, because yes. yeah. we want to give them a chunk of money. Yes, you know. yes, that would be fair. Yes, so is this additional revenue? Is this, this isn't budgeted? This would be. Uh, 2023's budget. So, 
currently so it's budgeted at two hundred thousand dollars. So the payment, so the additional payment wouldn't be until twenty twenty three. Yes, that budget cycle. Yes. And by then we would at least start to have a better handle on. Yeah. Yep. So an audit shows. <coughs> yeah. We could uh, move that up or down as part of the budget process. Is that correct? Yeah, I I don't know that. Uh, I think if that number is going to change, I think it's probably the 2024 budget cycle before you, you see it go up and down. Any other questions? Yeah. Hearing none, all in favor of resolution number 23, please signify by saying aye as your name is called and all of you opposed. Tully. Aye. Fire. Aye. Randall. Aye. Lars. Aye. Monty. Aye. Miles. Aye. Trader. No. It is uh, seven with seven affirmative and one with. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor, Randall. I second it. No. I move. 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 I on a voice vote, all in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. We are adjourned. Very careful. Good job. Thank you.